I thank you, God, for most this amazing day, for the leaping greenly spirits of trees and a blue true dream of sky, and for everything which is natural, which is infinite, which is yes. I, who have died, am alive again today, and this is the sun's birthday. This is the birthday of life and love and wings and the gay great happening illimitably earth. How should tasting, touching, hearing, seeing, breathing, any, lifted from the know of all nothing, human merely being, doubt unimaginable you. Now the ears of my ears awake, now the eyes of my eyes are opened. morning. Oh, shall we light the chalice? Debbie? We light this chalice with the warmth of love, the light of truth, and for the energy of action. Thank you, Debbie. Good morning. Welcome. This is the Unitarian Universalist Church of Ogden, and my name is John. I'm glad to be your worship associate today. The Unitarian Universalist Church is a welcoming, inclusive place where diversity of thought is encouraged and sought and appreciated. It doesn't matter who you love or how you identify yourself. We come here because we want to think for ourselves and explore with others. We ask questions, value the exchange of ideas, and the depth that can come from being in a community. Newcomers are welcome. We're glad to see you here. We encourage you to fill out the newcomer card that should be in the back of the pew, or you can fill out a card online. <clears throat> Lisa is going to be our leader today, and she's been up here, uh, what, three, three Sundays in a row? Too many Sundays in a row. So I don't feel like you really need to introduce you. Did you have anything you wanted me to? You'll see when she's up here, okay? Um, we love having uh, people of all ages here. And in the back, there is a basket of activities. You may have passed by. Next time you can grab something for anybody of any age who needs to have something to fiddle with so they can... Uh, sit still, sort of. <laughs> Wiggles and the sounds of a multi-generational community are welcome here. If you haven't already, and I haven't, put your phone on silent, please, though we don't mind if you fiddle with that either. We're so glad that each and one of each and every one of you are here. Welcome.
When Kristen pulled me aside the day of Pride and asked me to speak in church, she prefaced her request with something like, you probably aren't going to like this. <laughs> <laughs> She had uncovered my deep-seated blanket fort in the closet, introverted soul. The whirlwind of pride and my excitement for our church to participate had surprised my timid self, and I thought I was only hours away from freedom. Mel Gibson would have been envious of my chair. <laughs> now, after the glitter dust has settled, I can happily share that speaking in front of you today, while well, my heart is racing, <laughs> <laughs> about the wonder and experience that was Ogden Pride Weekend is a true and sincere pleasure. Aligning with the August theme of preparation, I want to talk briefly about the preparation that was involved in our Ogden Pride Day event. During my first 5 a.m. brainstorm, a few weeks before the event, I thought of giving away the usual party favors of rainbow beads and glitter that accompany most um, Pride festivals. But Kristen had the brilliant idea to use the pinwheel as a symbol of our Unitarian values instead. I found a pinwheel, pinwheel with enough petals so that we could list each of the values separately. Justice, equity, transformation, pluralism, interdependence, generosity, and found heart stickers that could be placed in the center to demonstrate our commitment to hold love at the center of who we are as Unitarians. The favorite highlights of Pride Weekend include dancing the night away. Oh, we'll, I'll let you look at this for just a second. So this was our booth at Pride, um, the pinwheel with all of our values. And then we had this basket full, but we also had another enormous basket full of, of pinwheels. And those are my two girls that helped. They were instrumental in putting this together. We can go to the next one. Okay. The favorite highlights of Pride Weekend include dancing the night away Friday at the queer prom with my favorite tricycle, Karen and John, and learning on Saturday that Marilyn and Brent were the bells of the ball just before we got there. We just missed them. It was glorious to meet up with Kristen and our fellow UUs on Saturday at the Pride kickoff. We were bedazzled in solidarity, and I dare say one of the liveliest bunches in the amphitheater. It wasn't just sweat, but love that dripped down our foreheads. The day of, we arrived at the amphitheater on an already too hot morning and met Jessica there with her help and the assistance of our booth neighbor. We were able to get the tarp up, hung up the banners, Kristen came to our booth as soon as the service ended and gave us all glitter blessings, ensuring that our hearts were open and receptive to the people we'd meet. Our turnout the day of Pride was exceptional. We weren't only blessed with visits from many Pride attendees, but our church friends also braved the heat to come and offer their support. They were the best cheerleaders. We reconnected with the booth from Encircle who had they came and presented to our group, I think last year. They're getting ready to open their Ogden building after some delays. And so I'm excited that they'll be there to support our LGBTQ youth plus youth. Unlike my previous experience at religious booths, where I'd go miles around to avoid making eye contact with anyone in the Scientology booth at the State Fair. <laughs> and we'll regularly dodge sister missionaries walking around Temple Square I made eye contact with and smiled at everyone that walked up the aisle. We welcomed them into the shade of our booth, answered questions, shared our values, and gave everyone who wanted a pinwheel. Two families filled out welcome cards. One of them expressed how they'd been looking for a church where all were welcome and where, and where their children could feel safe. Many were excited to learn of a church where different views were celebrated. The thrill of the day was extended when we met Unitarians from Florida, Illinois, and Montana. 
It's incredible. Making those connections helped to expand the reach of our love across the country. On Sunday, one of my favorite parts of Pride was our celebration of Tracy and Marilyn's 30th anniversary. They took time out of their weekend commemoration to battle the heat with us. They brought a poster they'd made that included a napkin from their wedding and pictures which some commented looked like they were taken outside the temple. <laughs> it did, they really did. It was wonderful to be part of their holy day. Tracy also dazzled us with her proselytizing skills. She channeled the welcoming, excited energy of her mission, stood near the front of the tarp, and she and Marilyn broke, both brought so many people into the joy that is Unitarian Universalism. A special shout out, we were delighted by Rex the tortoise, who showed up with rainbow flare from the Ogden Nature Center. <laughs> And there's Kristen right there. He was the only critter at Pride who seemed unaffected by the temperature. <laughs> One of the metrics I looked at that signaled we'd had a successful event was finding that we gave away every single pinwheel we'd made, including the larger UU values pinwheels and small glitter pinwheels. Over 200 pinwheels bearing UU values and blessed with UU love went out into the world. Some took them as decorations for their yards, and that made me so happy. So happy, I forgot where I was. <laughs> I imagine them out there glittering in the sunshine and spinning with the breeze all over Northern Utah. And Abby and I wildly made more in the booth after we ran out. One woman waited several minutes so that she would have one to take with her. While our pews aren't yet overflowing, my heart swells with hope knowing that the message of our church has been shared. Thank you. I want to thank my daughters for their unwavering willingness to be volunteered. Abby spent hours making pinwheels with me and I don't remember any squares. Ashley and the Grants filled up our love batteries on Saturday before Pride kickoff and Ari was my partner at the amphitheater and she and Abby both helped during our big Sunday event. Proud mom. I also want to give a resounding thank you to our volunteers, Jessica, Marilyn, and Tracy, Dylan, Holly, Debbie, Ben, Peter, Karen, and John. And a huge shout out goes to our favorite UU cheerleaders, Brian, Suzanne, Brent, and Marilyn. To Marianne, I want to extend my special thanks. She handled my multiple emails with grace and answered all my questions related to the website and banners with patients. Without her stickers, the pinwheels would not have turned out as amazing as they did. Lastly, I want to offer my sincere and tremendous thanks to Kristen for giving me the opportunity to get out of the introvert closet and be a part of this amazing event. I am awed by our devotion to each other and the love that leads us. We are graced with a minister who cares, shares, and tirelessly works to ensure we are headed forward together into the future. With my sincerest love. Blessed be. Our opening hymn today is the number 1054. Let us be answered. Well, then, no. Hymn number 1054. that's going to be important. We're singing the first two verses. Just the first two. <laughs> if you continue, you will have a solo. <laughs> Feel free. <laughs>
So we're perfect. Okay, so we're ready. Are we walking? Actually, for just a second, we're going to go through this together. And then, for, if you're watching online, we have a one you can do at home. Could you uh, lift the podium? Yes. Perfect. All right, if you open your bag, there should be five different parts. We have our pinwheel, the straw. <laughs> there should be a stem that looks like this. A Smarties, which you can have afterwards. A heart sticker. And the trickiest part of all, I call it a button. I don't know in the pinwheel world, world world what it's called, but it's a little, little nub. This will actually hold your pinwheel together. So we're going to start with our pinwheel. If we hold the pinwheel towards us so the letters are facing us, you want to take your button. Your button's your very first thing. So pick any, any pedal that I call these pedals. Facing you, put the little button towards you so the opening comes out the front. So it should look like this. It reminds me of like an Audi belly button. Yeah, it goes forward through the front. Perfect. Are we good? No, I don't know which direction. So have, have the words facing you. And then the, the opening of the little button comes towards you. You want to put it in the back of the pedal. So the flat piece goes in the back. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. She, she got trained last night, so she's ready. So then you'll fold, you'll fold this one to, over towards the center. So facing you, fold it towards the center like that. And then your next pedal, you tuck in right beneath. Yep. Yeah, right underneath. So now you have, so now the flat part is facing you and the little button parts on the inside. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we also, modified pinwheels are brilliant as well. All right. Yeah, walk through. Yeah. The first one is always the hardest. Yeah, and then you keep adding them on once you have that first, but first okay. button.
the center of who we are as Unitarians. Dylan, are there people online that would want to see the paper demonstration? We're good, perfect. Thank you so much.
For our prayer in sacred silence, I want to read What We Do Matters by Laura Horton Ludwig. Will you join me in a moment of prayer with these words? Spirit of life and love, we are here because we believe what we do matters. We are here because we believe how we live our life matters. That which, with every act of kindness or meanness, courage or fear, love or hate, we are weaving the fabric of the universe that holds us all. We are here because we need encouragement, because we need strength, because so often we get distracted, we get in a rush, we don't think we choose the easy way, when the harder path is what our spirit truly longs for. We are here because none of us is perfect, but together we inspire one another to try again, to take another step. We are here because we have felt the stirrings of love and grace in our hearts and hands, and we crave more of that. For ourselves, and not only for ourselves, but for everyone. We are here because how we live matters. Blessed be. As is our custom, we will continue with a collective active prayer by coming forward to engage in our weekly ritual that helps us hold the challenges and joys of being human. As you light a candle, let it lift up your hopes, memories, and gratitude for this beautiful, complicated world and for our lives. As you drop a stone in our sacred gathered waters, May it be an opportunity to imagine those burdens and quest for forgiveness held in a community that will let the stone land with care and intention. We come forward.
Now time to call for the offering. If I could have two people who would take the baskets. Good morning. I'm Marianne. Uh, I wanted to first of all thank you for your patience as we do our little check-ins out there. We're trying to use our, we have a church management system called Breeze. We're trying to use that uh, to its fullest extent and that means getting our database correct and uh, what that means is understanding who's active and who may be not and all of that. So we're tracking how many folks come and uh, who you are so that I can see so we can see again how many folks are are showing and and when we want to communicate with you we want to make sure that we have all the accurate information so we're also going to do this on the uh, September 8th and the 15th so if you know folks that um, would like to remain active in our database please encourage them to come to one of those sessions or of course contact me at admin at uuco dot org. That's it. Thank you. Oh, our service comes to an end. Uh, join me in saying the chalice extinguishing words in your order of service. We extinguish this chalice 
but not the warmth of love, the light of truth, nor the energy of action. Lisa. Will, will you join me in singing the closing hymn? It's number 146 in the gray. Soon the day will arrive. That's 146 in the gray hymnal. Hymn number 146. Are you going to skip through it first? Hmm? Okay. Yes. All right. Yes, I will. <clears throat> When we will be together and no longer will we live in fear, and the children will smile without wondering whether on that day thunder clouds will appear. Wait and see, wait and see what a world there can be if we share, if we care. You and is beautiful. All of you is loved. Thank you.